There is all sorts of confusion about who to vote for. We have the progressives, we have the PNA. I'm not sure what that stands for. They tell me it stands for please not again. <laughs> we have the UDP, we have the C4C, and then we have a bunch of people that claim to be independents. I want to say this to you. If I have learned two lessons from my almost 13 years as a representative, it is this. One man rule is bad. That's what we've had these last four years. But a government of independence is also bad. That's what we had in 2000. That lasted one year. Ladies and gentlemen, it comes down to this. You don't need a party. I would never say to you that, you, that a country needs a party to run it. But it does need a team. We can't do anything in this world without teamwork. Not anything important, anyhow. The progressives present to you a team that is capable in every respect, in terms of the numbers that we have, and in terms of the ability of the people we have to run your country. The only other te team out there that has the numbers to run your country without having to make a horse trade with somebody else or some other group is the UDP. So ladies and gentlemen, any of those others who get elected are going to have to make a deal with somebody if they're going to form a government. It takes a minimum of 10 members to form a government, and the only two teams in the race that have at least 10, UDP has 12, we have 15. Nobody else has 10. What I can say to you tonight is, I don't know who the C4C people are talking to. I don't know who the PNA people are talking to. I don't know who the other independents are talking to, but they aren't talking to us. And so what that means is, if they are running and they hope to deliver on the promises that they make to you, they have to, to group together with some team to be able to form a government. I want you to bear that in mind because there are a number of good people that are running, claiming to be independent. Some may actually really believe that they're independent. But come the morning of the 23rd, when a government has got to be formed, I don't care if you run as an independent, you have to get together with a minimum of nine other people if you are going to form a government. So you have to form a government with somebody. And the question that you must ask them, and you must ask yourselves, ladies and gentlemen, if they are not working with the progressives, who are they working with? As, as the UDP has disintegrated, we have all sorts of people who were associated with the UDP claiming they are independents. But you need to ask yourself, what is going to happen if they are elected the morning following the election? Are we going to be faced with a government made up of C4C members, PNA members, and UDP members? And you have to ask yourself, ladies and gentlemen, if you think that more of the same that we've had these past four years is what ought to be inflicted on this country for the next four years. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the process of, of getting the last stages of our manifesto. And the next meeting that we have, the next national meeting that we have, will be the meeting that we actually launch our manifesto and start to talk to you in detail 
about how we intend to move this country forward, what it is that we are going to do specifically as far as the economy is concerned, what it is that we are going to do specifically to create more jobs, more opportunities, and better the lot of the people in this country, how it is that we, we are going to roll back many of the dangerous and damaging taxes which are stifling the economy, <laughs> making people's lives so difficult. And forcing everybody into poverty. But tonight is not the night for that. There are others who have to speak after me. I thank you for your time and attention. I thank you for your support. I thank you for coming out in such numbers tonight. God bless you, and God bless these beautiful Cayman Islands. Thank you very much, Honorable Leader. Well said. In other words, if you don't do it right on the 22nd, how are you going to explain this mistake to your children? <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's move on to Bottom Town. I give you Anthony Eden. My name is Jacqueline Scott. I am voting for Anthony Eden in the district of Borden Town. He has done numerous of projects. He has been a very integral part of building the schools. He has built the post office. He has built the rehab center. He has been loyal to his people. And he's one of the most caring, honest, and God fearing individuals that I've known. Good evening, folks. It's such a wonderful experience to see, I think, must be half a Cayman sitting in this audience out there. Welcome, welcome. First of all, I would like to thank God, my family, and the Baden Town people who have placed their trust in me. I am honored and humbled to have had the opportunity to serve in the Legislative Assembly representing the great district of Baden Town and Cayman in general. For over 20 years, 12 of them as a cabinet minister, as Alden alluded to earlier. And I don't want to do this, but I know there are some people out there saying that nothing was ever done in Baden Town or Cayman until recently, so I will just use this opportunity to share a few things with you. In those 20 years, I have spearheaded and assisted in dozens of projects in my district of Baden Town and our beloved Cayman Islands. To name a few, the largest of which was the building of the Georgetown Hospital, health centers in each district in Grand Cayman, a rehab facility, significant improvements in education shared with my colleague who just departed the podium, roads, remember when we took over what was like driving on the eastern part of the island, <laughs> assistance to our elderly, to the children, the seamen, and the veterans. Folks, all of this was accomplished by working together as a team, sharing similar visions to make Cayman a better place for all. We can continue to do this by staying away from divisive politics and believing that we all can contribute it to the betterment of these islands. Why, why should we abandon the recipe for success laid by our forefathers, that is, working together and fearing God. This has brought great success to us. Folks, if we depart from these basic principles, we are doomed to fail. I'm proud to be a representative of Borden Town and pledge that with the help of God, I will continue to provide honest and fair representation for all. I will always be there for you.
I just want to leave a few words of a prayer from the Reverend Billy Graham. And it pertains, was addressed in the great United States that seems to be falling apart and seem can apply to Cayman. Heavenly Father, we come before you today to seek your direction and guidance. We know your words say, what are those who call evil good? But that is exactly what we have done. We have reversed our values. We have neglected to discipline our children and called it building self-esteem. We have abused power and called it politics. We have ridiculed the values of our forefathers and called it enlightenment. Search us, O oh God. Cleanse us from every sin and set us free. Ladies and gentlemen, my number in Bodentown is number five. I'm proud of my colleagues, and I have the honor now to introduce the one and only Wayne Panton. Thank you, and good night. My name is uh, Uriel Scott, District of Bodentown. And I'm um, voting for Wayne Panton. He has my fullest support. He was always devoted to his community and his family. And uh, apart from his job, he is a person of very high degree of integrity. All we need now are the dedicated people, and Wayne is one of them. Good evening, Cayman. And a special good evening to Bodden Town. I see a lot of you here. The Cayman Islands are at a crossroad. Now, how many times have you heard that in the past? Every election. And it's a cliche. But if it was never more true today, you know the past four years have been one heck of a scary ride for all of us. Part of it was the, the global economy. But more so, it is the crisis of leadership that we have been experiencing, nay, enduring. And it hasn't been limited to just one individual. We've had an epidemic of failures, which has destroyed our trust and confidence in our elected government. I say it is time to restore order. We are tired. We are tired of being embarrassed, offended, of paying the price, and wasting huge sums of money. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our country and our government. And we must, you must, exercise your democratic obligation to take it back and make things right. We say there is a clear choice, and it is the progressives, all of my colleagues here and myself. Now, I have chosen to offer myself in public service to you with humility. And if I am elected, I certainly look forward to serving my country generally and the people of Bodentown in particular, helping to mold a better future for our children. I know that the challenges are many, and it is an awesome responsibility that I ask you to bestow upon me. But I assure you that you will be placing your trust in good hands. I will confront the issues and those challenges to make your lives better, our lives better, our communities safer, and restore pride in our country. I promise you this, no matter how difficult the task, no matter how big the fight to promote and protect the interest of Caymanians, your interest, I won't back down. And I'm out of time, so let me say I have the pleasure of introducing my friend and colleague and one of Baden Town's next progressive representatives, Mr. Alva Saku. Uh, read 
a hard worker. Um, I've come to Al for help in, in numer num numerous of our times, and he has just said to me back, this is the way it goes. Set things out in a plain, simple language that I was able to understand and really helped me out. Al is very uh, honest and has a uh, very high integrity. So I would make a great representative for the people of Borden Town and the Cayman Islands. Thank you all. Thank you and good evening. Good evening, Grand Cayman, Cayman Islands, and Borton Town. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, in the year 1831, a meeting took place in Borton Town at Pedro, Pedro St. James, or Pedro Castle as we know it. The purpose of that meeting was to determine the legislative future of these three islands. That historic decision made Borton Town the birthplace of democracy in the Cayman Islands. Since then, we Caymanians have endured many challenges from world wars to hurricanes to recessions and depressions. However, the past four years has seen us battle against destruction of a different kind. Hope and pride have been drained away by a government that has waged war against its own people. A war against integrity, honesty, and transparency, and that has brought with it unprecedented suffering, poverty, crime, and unemployment. If I make one promise to you and to my people in Borden Town tonight, it is that I will strain every sinew and to restore confidence in our country and to create jobs for our people and to show you that there is a better way.